Hey guys, and welcome back to Third Act for our next installment of our newest segment for the next 10 minutes. So for the next 10 minutes, we will be talking about casting this week. Um, we're super excited to talk about this. We have four of our lovely team members with us joining us for this video. Um, and we have a lot to say about this one, guys. I'm really excited. Um, this is also our first video on Zoom. So it's gonna be a little different when you guys are watching it at home. All right, so joining us for this video, we have, of course, the lovely Daniela with me. And we also have two of our play consultants, Brianna and Justin. And we also have our veteran musical consultant, Mandy, and our newest musical consultant, Yahida, joining us. Um, how are you guys doing? How's everybody doing today? I'm Super tired. good. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> good. So excited to get into these next ten minutes. Yes. I am. I'm really excited. I'm a little like I don't. I don't want to say nervous because I'm not nervous, but like I'm. I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say because I feel like this is a topic that that really gets talked about like behind the scenes, but never really like in like bring. It's never brought to light. Um, and I feel like people always have things to say about casting and they never say it. So I'm really excited that we're going to be able to do that right now. This is going to be super interesting, just knowing that all of us have come from different high schools and a lot of us have had different experiences with community theaters. Okay, so we've broken it down to four topics. Um, we may not get to all of them in the first video, but if we do, we're going to start with show choice. So whenever designers and directors get together to create a production, they have to think of, you know, the culture that's within the plot of the musical or the play. They have to think about each character, you know, if a character has autism or if a character has Down syndrome, they need to consider the person that they're casting within the show. They need to, you know, consider what message am I trying to get across to my audience? especially when it comes to cultural plays or musicals, like say The Wiz. In The Wiz, it's originally a Motown musical. And obviously we all know Motown is, was, you know, a group or kind of a culture for African-Americans in the United States. And I think it's really important to only cast, you know, African-American people if you're doing The Wiz. I don't think that it should be made by or produced by people that aren't African American. So if, if you cast a white cast, you know, that just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't express what they were truly trying to express within the musical, what the the playwright was trying to express to the audiences all, all over the country or wherever you're performing it. I think going off of that, um, it even goes into musicals that are like super well known now, like Hairspray, Dream Girls, The Color Purple, like um even in the heights like in the heights um on your mm -hmm. feet it's a lesser known musical but like those rely heavily on the culture um and if you don't have the people to represent that it is kind of it's, it's, not, it's not yeah <laughs> i mean the playwright the playwright has had an intention like you said like when it when they were writing it like it was to bring this culture to light with the people that live and breathe it every day so um it, it's it, it is important when you're thinking about the show if you know you have to consider that because not only that but sometimes not sometimes i'm stupid all the time like if if they're not part of that culture or they're not part of that race they're not going to be able to bring that to the performance um like a white person is not going to know the struggles of a latino or a black person so they're not going to be able to portray it authentically they're going to have to look for other avenues and like research and that's like yes research is good but when it comes to that specific topic mm -hmm. I, like I authenticity I, yeah. yeah like I personally think research won't help you there um I think this topic is something that isn't talked about enough in our community I feel like it's one of those I feel like this topic or this subject of casting um it all starts in the beginning like do we have the right kind of people for it do we have the um you know do we have the means to do it? Because nowadays, like people understand more. I feel like it's um, more understood that you shouldn't be putting on a show if you are not going to cast the proper cast that belongs in the show. I feel like a lot of light has been shed on this more. Like an example, Hairspray. The creators of Hairspray said that there can no longer, like they actually, they actually like put it out there 
and they made it like a requirement to where you cannot have an all white cast. And I think that that was very, I think that was a really big power move from the uh, creators of Hairspray um, due to everything that's going on because I feel like it's just not talked about enough in the community. And it's like one of those subjects where a lot of directors, maybe a lot of creatives, I feel like they might skip over it or when it when it's brought up, a lot of people get like real quiet or get really like antsy and walk on eggshells because it's just one of those topics where a lot of people don't like to talk about it, but I feel like it's okay to talk about it. It's okay to, it's okay to have discussions like this now. I feel like it's actually, if not more than okay, important to talk about stuff like this. I feel like there is such a stigma because people have avoided the discussion for so long, I guess like out of politeness or I don't know why, but um, another example other than In the Heights, I think um, would have been like Miss Saigon. Like if that was an, you know, like this is, that's a story about like wartime and how it affected children specifically. Like I, I wouldn't say that, you know, America's really like struggled, like their children, you know, on the streets, like really like living in villages and things like that. Like that type of particular struggle is like very um, relatable for POCs and, yeah like the authenticity has to be there otherwise it's going to be a miss and like that would that's just such a disservice to the writers and all everybody who is who's like worked so hard to put on such an authentic performance of that or even like west side story right because that's like like it, it's i guess like i've okay so i've seen a west side story where it was like people of color versus people of color. And I feel like it kind of threw off the, the original meaning of the script, like when I first ever was introduced to that uh, story. So like, I don't know, it, it could swing both ways. Like you could like whitewash a cast and it not, you know, hit. And then also like, I don't know, what's the opposite of whitewash? Like completely diversify like a cast. Yeah. and. I feel like it could be both both ways. Yeah, yeah, she brought up like a really good point. Like they'll never un like the if you have if you were to have a white like an all cast in Wiz or in like you know West Side Story, any plays involving you know people of you know cultural backgrounds, it goes back to the appropriation of struggle, and it doesn't sell the show. Not only does it sell the show, but it's just it was not meant for it to be performed that way. And I feel like it's really important, you know, to not be afraid to talk about this because yeah, there is a big stigma. A lot of people, I'm just saying flat out, like a lot of people get really uncomfortable talking about it. Um, but I feel like it's it's not that um, uncomfortable anymore. Uh, it's a lot more normalized to talk about this. Directors and designers of all around, they're just so focused on, okay, who do I have? Who's gonna audition? Okay, this is what I have. They're good singers. I, I think they could sing the song really well, but they don't think, okay, will they portray this character really well? Will it be authentic? Is this genuinely going to make my production well? And is it going to deliver the message? But they don't yeah. think that. They think, okay, they're a pretty good singer. Or, eh, I mean, they're, they're okay, they look like that character. Yeah, they can yes, that. yes. <laughs> a lot of directors just take it and run with it. <laughs> Just take a person and run with them sometimes. You know, we need to have a good production. This is the only way. No, they, they need to start thinking, okay, why am I doing this? I'm doing this because it's art and I want to show art. I want to create art, not I want to make profits off of this art that isn't really from my heart or my mind, you know? One thing that we can start doing as, as a community and as as actors, um, I, I want to say is knowing what to audition for and writing down specifically what part you are not comfortable with. Um, and, and if your director or if a community theater is doing a show that's not supposed to, it, it, it's not appropriate for it to be done here without, without having the, the right people I want to say that it, it's come to the point where we need to stand up and we need to speak out about it. And um, 
auditions are also like a, a very, very important part of a casting process. And I'm going to transition into that. That way we can um, talk about that a little bit more. But auditions and, p and picking the right material for your audition has to be a step forward to that. Um, so, for example, I would not be singing anything from Miss Saigon uh, in my book. That, that would not be appropriate for me to have that in my book. Um, it would not be appropriate for me to have anything from the color purple in my book. Um, and I, I, we need to normal, normalize these things and make sure that we're so aware of it and that directors are aware of it too. Oh my gosh. Okay, whatever. Hi. Uh, so, okay. I'm interrupting this incredible video because uh, we ended up having a conversation for over two hours. This is only 10 minutes of the conversation that we had, which is okay. We all have very, very strong opinions of what we believe of the casting process. So this will become a few parts. Um, so next week you will get to see two videos instead of just one. Um, and we will continue the conversation talking about auditions, talking about deliberation and final casting. All right, so I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish editing this video, and I will see you guys in the outro. But also, I'll see you guys next week. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. So that brings us to the end of this video. Um, this was a really good conversation. Um, I think we made some really good points. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, those of you watching. All right, so just a quick announcement about the intermission collection. It is now, when this video goes out, it will have been two weeks since we released the intermission collection and the orders are <laughs> pouring in and we're so excited from all the support that you guys have been giving us um, and the Harlingen Community Theater because that is the theater that this will be benefiting. Um, but for those of you who don't know what the intermission project is or about the intermission collection, you can go ahead and watch the video. The link will be in the description below, as well as the order form to order your hoodie or your t-shirt or your bundle. Um, again, all the proceeds and all the profits will be going to the Harlingen Community Theater as part of the intermission project. And we want to thank them once again for allowing us to collaborate with them on this amazing, amazing project. And we hope this is the beginning of something really beautiful. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye.